Now, a lot of people in the industry say that Deontay Wilder is an awkward fighter. Now, if you're not, if you don't watch boxing much, what is that awkwardness? Because you've spotted Deontay before many a times. What is that awkwardness that people talk about? Well, the shots that you're used to coming straight are coming from around. The jab that you're used to somebody leaning to the right side throwing, Deontay is leaning to the left side throwing. The right hand that you're used to somebody just hitting you square with, Deontay is turning his whole torso and everything in the right hand. So his defense is underrated. I, I think people don't realize how fast he really is until they get in there with him. So I'll go back to my statement earlier. Speed is power, right? Deontay Wilder, people like to talk shit, in my opinion, when he comes in on a scale 214. When I look at it, every time he come in light, I'm looking at it like, wow. That means the, the missile, the right hand, is going to be coming that much faster, which means it's going to be that much harder for the opponent. Because if you think he had his most devastating knockouts when he was at those weight limits of when people were saying, why is he so light? Mr. Vernon Whitty came in that rematch, 219, 218. Luis Ortiz, 214. When he was younger, fighting two, coming in 211, 212, he was sleeping Calvin Price. He was sleeping uh, Sergey Lavage. He was sleeping Malik Scott, even my, like, you know what I'm trying to say? So this is when he was at a weight when it is not about 250 or 60 or 40 something pounds. He's never got up that high. So it goes to show you the damage that he's doing with a weight that you're not even supposed to be doing damage at as a heavyweight champion. But he's getting the job done in grand fashion. Maliki, obviously in the UK as well because you're sparring David Hay. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about the promoter behind that fight, Eddie Hearn. Now there's been a lot of, there's been a rise in British boxing and people are talking about whether it's the competition between Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren. But what do you make of Eddie as a promoter and maybe how the rise of boxing in the UK has occurred? Uh, I don't want to say he took over boxing, but he um, he just made a hell of an impact, especially on the heavyweight division. I'm not really too keen in on a lot of the fighters he have under the heavyweight division, but I know he even have some guys down there making noise. That's world champions. And very, he just signed Danny Jacobs, who's a monster. I'm sure Danny Jacobs is going to be in super fights because of Eddie Hearn's good job and work rate that he do. So, I mean, what Eddie is doing is just... Um, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what he was inherited to do from his father. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? The, 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 the apple don't fall too far from the tree. His father was a great promoter, and I believe, I, I don't want to say he's a better promoter than his father, but I believe for this time right now, Eddie is the most modern-day, up-to-date promoter that's doing everything that's supposed to be done in modern-day times. A lot of these other promoters, in my opinion, are in 2018, but they treat in 2018 like they treated 2007. Boxing is about revolution. Things are changing. Fighters are different. That's almost like saying somebody that don't run 10 miles on concrete, you're saying that they want to win a fight because this person does cardio drills with battle ropes, and this person does cardio drills with swimming. No, old school is old school, and it's good, but it's not what the modern day fighters nor promoters are using it to be multi-millionaires and millionaires. And so I'm even starting to hear billionaire talk in boxing right now, and it's only really coming from Floyd Mayweather and Anthony Joshua. And Anthony Joshua is in what? The heavyweight division. That trickled down, that blessing, just that being said, it trickles down on the heavyweight division in general all the fighters under it. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? So this time is a blessing for all heavyweights, for all fighters, for, you know, everything. So, you know, it's a good thing. Obviously, talking about the heavyweight division, we can't forget about the person, the man who beat the man, Tyson Fury. Obviously, he's very active on social media. People find him entertaining. What's your perspective of Tyson? I think what Tyson did in Germany against Vladimir, it opened everything up to what it is right now. Obviously because uh, uh, Prince Charles ended up getting the title and all of that stuff happened with the, with the titles Tyson took from Vlad. And it just opened everything up. And that's just the reality of it. Tyson opened doors up for a lot of fighters right now in the division to be doing what they're doing. But now it's another part of that reality that says Tyson also has a Ford and I don't know. I can't judge a man that I haven't, that I seen do something years ago when I'm seeing these lions do the things that they're doing now. Like I, like Anthony Joshua would not been beat Dominique Brazil in a fashion that nobody beat Dominique Brazil in. Deontay Wilder stopped 
Stavern and Fashion and nobody ever came close to stopping Stavern and he just beat King Kong Ortiz. So I can't see these guys fighting. I see the Jarrell Millers coming up and see the Dylan Whites coming up and still have so much energy talking about Tyson Fury. I, I, I ideally, my mind doesn't even let me, it's almost like I appreciate Tyson for what he did against Vlad, but what's going on right now is going on right now. So I, like, I'm hoping he can even look good on his first fight back. Can we talk about Tyson first fight back or second fight back? Then, in my opinion, put him in the ranks of what's going on now. You get what I'm trying to say?